And we're following another big sports story today. More than 2,000 retired NFL players are joining forces in a massive lawsuit accusing the league of turning a blind eye to the dangers of concussions. Players say the NFL concealed information linking football-related concussions to permanent neurological problems. And now they say they suffer from debilitating brain disease because the NFL never told them the risks involved. Riddell, the company that makes the NFL's helmets, has also been named in this suit. I'm joined now by Michael McCann, legal analyst for Sports Illustrated. Michael, thank you so much for your time. Sure, Tamara. Thanks Obviously, for having me on. Obviously, your magazine, you know, Real Sports with Brian Gumbel, so many others have written, I think, and, and reported on this in such an excellent and informative way. But here you have these NFL players right now. They filed this lawsuit, and this could be incredible. I heard someone compare this to boxing, that this could do to the NFL what happened to boxing and that it becomes so violent and is seen in such a negative light that it falls off as a family sport that we enjoy watching. Well, Tamron, I think we've already seen that effect to some extent. I think a lot of parents are now not letting their children play football, in part because of concerns that have been raised in lawsuits like these. And now, as you noted at the top, over 2,200 players in over 90 lawsuits now consolidated into one lawsuit saying the NFL concealed information. It's very threatening to the league. But on the other hand, the league has a strong argument. And the league's argument is to say these claims should be waived because they're preempted by the collective bargaining agreement. And Judge Anita Brody is going to have to make that determination. All of these claims could be dismissed. At least that's what the NFL wants. Would we be at this point if uh, Junior Sale had not tragically taken his life? Uh, Ray Easterling, Dave Dorison, the, the Chicago Bears, if these men had not lost their lives and perhaps their families believed it was linked to football, would we be at this point? Well, I think, Tamron, those tragedies have only amplified the topic. But I also think that even if they didn't occur, we would still see litigation like this. So many retired players are in tough shape. Many, although they haven't had those types of tragedies, still linger on with debilitating permanent injuries to the brain, to the rest of the body, and they believe that they were misled in playing in the National Football League. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, wait a second. When you play in the NFL, you know that you're going up against the largest men on earth who are also among the fastest men on earth. You put them together, repeated collisions, of course you're going to get hurt. So there's an assumption of risk argument. And there's also a causation issue. How do we know that the brain injuries occurred while playing in the NFL right. when they had maybe thousands of commissions before they even played in the league? Well, the NFL has a statement. They said they've long uh, made player safety a priority and continue to do so. Any allegation that the NFL sought to mislead players has no merit. I've spent time interviewing Jim Mc man uh, in his Chicago home after he'd retired. He talked a lot about um, what he believed the players perhaps were not, I guess, fully made aware of. He's on this lawsuit as well, has tried to live his life as healthy as he can, like so many others. But Michael, I've got to tell you, um, the NFL says that Obviously, with technology, with information, we mo know more now today than we did when McMahon and others played. Is that a fair argument? Well, there's certainly some truth to that. Let's, let's be real. The science has evolved to the point where they now know more. There's a, a longer baseline, if you will, in terms of injuries suffered by, by players who played decades ago and the effects on them now. But you could also argue, and I think the NFL has made this point, Information on concussions has been around for a long time. Yeah. This isn't like the tobacco industry, which concealed information about the right. link between tobacco and lung cancer. Uh, you hit your head over and over again, you could get a concussion, and this has been known for but over Michael, a century. Michael, that's what some are saying, that they believe perhaps that the NFL concealed information, which, if true, would make it like tobacco. It would. And I think if the players can show that the league somehow did conceal that information and they concealed it from their union, the players' union, when they negotiated collective bargaining agreements and also before CBAs were even bargained, yeah. the players would have a strong yeah. point. But the players, that's a hard burden for the players right. to show. All right. Michael McCann with uh, Sports Illustrated Legal Analyst. Thank you so much, Michael. Great pleasure.